Welcome to the A to Z of Dynamic Dunescapes. Dynamic Dunescapes is an ambitious project restoring 7,000 hectares of coastal sand dunes around the UK. Each day this month we'll be exploring our biodiverse and beautiful sand dune systems, uh, marvelling at the landscapes and meeting the creatures that are specially adapted to live in them from A to Z. A is for app. Citizen Science is a great way to get involved in conservation. You can download the Dynamic Dunescapes app from our website and help us gather really important data about habitats and species the next time you're out on the dunes. The app will take you through how to identify plants and other activities like fixed point photography. The B in the A to Z of Dynamic Dunescapes is for butterflies. Behind the four dunes, you can find grassland meadows, which are full of a variety of different wildflowers and plants, which in turn attract a variety of different butterflies. In early spring, you can see caterpillars feeding on the leaves of these plants before turning into adult butterflies that you can find flitting from plant to plant. Today, C is for cows. Cows are a really important part of making space for nature in sand dune systems. They do this by grazing, browsing, trampling and disturbing the ground throughout the sand dunes, which species such as lizards, butterflies, bees and wildflowers need to thrive. These species love disturbance and they love the ever-changing transitions in sand dune systems that they call home. How could D not be for dynamic? Many of the species you'll come across in this series are specialists which live in shifting sand systems. Unfortunately, some of the dune systems that we work in become very, very immobile. The work of the projects at the moment, Dynamic Dunescapes and the Sands of Life, is to look at remobilizing some of these places and creating habitats, again, that benefit the specialist plants and animals that live there. E is for Epidalia calamita otherwise known as the rare natterjack toad. Now these toads live in dune slacks and they lay their eggs in the shallow pools that form here. The eggs hatch into tadpoles and these grow into tiny little toadlets, like the little one we managed to catch on camera. We were very lucky to see him. Natterjack toads are incredibly rare and only found in a handful of locations across the UK. I'm here at the front of the dune system because today's letter is F and we're celebrating four dunes. Behind the embryo dunes, the first of form are the four dunes, and these are stabilised by the marram grass. As the plants grow and put their roots down, it stabilises the ground, and these four dunes can be in the same place for many years. They're open, sandy places, being a great place for beetles and sand lizard. So G is for ground nesting birds, and there's two main species of birds that nest quite often on sand dunes in the tussocks like this. That's the skylark which everyone loves the song of the sky like, and the meadow pipit. Um, they love hiding in the tussocks where they can hide the nest away from predators, from people, from dogs running by. So it's really handy if you're walking a dog, if you can try and keep on a pathway like this as much as possible, keep your dog under control, it really helps these birds. Both of them are rare species. H is for Helleborine, a beautiful type of orchid. Dune Helleborine is specially adapted for life on the dunes. They can grow up to a metre tall and survive in the poor sandy soils. They are rare and only found in the UK, but easier seen in the summer when their delicate yellow and pink flowers are in bloom between July and August. I is today for invasive species. Invasive species are plants or animals that aren't usually found in sand dune systems. Invasive species can grow quickly, take over habitats and prevent our native species from growing. We're working to remove invasive species like the Rosa rugosa that you can see behind me from some of our sand dunes to help restore the sand dunes natural biodiversity. J is for jumping spider. The tiny ants mimic jumping spider which looks and moves like an ant, can be found in areas of the sand dunes like this with lots of bare sand and marram grass. 
Jumping spiders have a very large front pair of eyes and that gives them good vision, uh, especially for an invertebrate. This good eyesight and their ability to jump onto things helps them to find and to catch their prey. K is for kestrel, a beautiful bird of prey that can be found soaring the skies above many of our sand dunes, like here at Gibraltar Point. They feed on small mammals, small birds, worms and other insects, all of which are found on a healthy sand dune system. However, kestrels have been in decline since the 1970s, therefore restoring sand dunes, creating a biodiverse and rich habitat is going to really support their populations. Uh, not all dune wildlife is uh, easy to spot. Some of the most interesting species are tiny and here we've got an example, scrambled egg lichen. As its name suggests, it looks just like scrambled eggs and if you look really closely you can see little orange fruiting bodies. Um, here in Cornwall at Penhale Dunes we've put up some extra fencing to help protect the lichen from accidental trampling of uh, holiday makers accessing the beach. As you can see the fence is behind me here and protects this bit of um, scrambled egg lichen. We've got more populations across the dunes um, so it's a really fantastic site for this very rare lichen. M is for marum. Marum grass. Marum grass is an extraordinary plant and it's specially adapted to survive and thrive in sand dune systems. It likes having the sand blown on it and dumped on it. In fact, if sand dune systems get too stable, then we start to lose the marum. So we need sand moving around. We need dunes to be dynamic. The roots can be up to four or five meters long. So when the sand gets dumped on the plant, it can pop up somewhere else. And the leaves are hard and waxy, which protects them from the sun and the salty winds. And they're curled to stop moisture from being evaporated from them. That's M for marum. N is for Northern Dune Tiger Beetle, possibly one of the fastest beetles in the world, but are native to our sand dunes. They are very rare and only found at two sites across the UK. Highly specialised, they require certain temperatures to function. They'll burrow in the bare sand to keep warm or hide amongst the marrow grass to keep cool. They are great predators too. They'll run really quickly across the sand to catch their prey, but when it comes to take flight, are quite comical to watch. As part of the project, we will be removing areas of thick vegetation. This will create more patches of bare sand for these rare beetles to thrive. In and amongst the long grasses from May through to July, a huge variety of orchids will appear in our dunes. Early spotted pyramid bee orchids, ladies' tress, these wonderful, beautiful, incredible plants are one of the great joys of our sand dunes, found in their thousands at our healthiest dunes. Keep your eyes peeled next year for our, the emergence of our beautiful, incredible array of orchids. P is for pools, and these form when dips between the dunes reach below the water table. They're really important habitats for lots of our rare and interesting species, such as natajack toads, newts, even colourful wild orchids. And sometimes areas of scrub, such as sea buckthorn, creep into the dune slacks, and that's why we're clearing some of this scrubland, is to protect these dune pool habitats for lots of our wildlife. Hi there, I've been given Q on our A to Z of dunes, and Q is for queens, queen bees more specifically. Bees love it here in the dunes at Woolacombe. Um, they like it in the winter, there's soft sand for them to burrow into, and then spring, summer, and late into the autumn, they use the species rich grassland for nectar. Uh, the f we do lots of bumblebee surveys here on the dunes once a month, uh, and the queens are normally the first to emerge in the spring. And here we have a white tailed queen just to show you. In and amongst the dunes, our furry friends live, little rabbits, digging holes, moving sand, nibbling away at vegetation that's growing, creating space 
for new life and new things to emerge and arrive. Rabbits are a fantastic component of the ecosystem of our dunes. And in some places, we're even adding them back in because their numbers have declined so badly. Look out for the wonderful rabbit on your next journey into the sand dune. They're fluff these fluffy little friends make for a wonderful treat uh, and best found on a quiet morning. S is for silver studded blues, a bright blue butterfly that you find on the Cornish sand dunes. The female lays her eggs next to an ant nest. When the larvae hatches, it secretes a delicious sugary substance that the ants absolutely love. So much so that they'll protect it, even escorting the caterpillar between the nest and its food plants. Our project aims to maintain the important habitats on the sand dunes, but most importantly, create some areas of bare sand that the ants require for building their nests. Silver studded blues, S. T is for turf stripping. This is one of the ways we are helping to protect our dunes. By carefully removing the top layer of turf, this exposes the bare sand underneath. The bare sand contains less nutrients, therefore coarse vegetation can't grow and overtake. Many specialised rare plants and animals require bare sand to thrive, such as sand lizards, solitary mining bees and yanatajack toads. U in the Dynamic Dunescapes alphabet stands for us. There are nearly 200 of us working on the project across England and Wales, but we are looking after over 7,000 hectares of sand dune after all. This includes ecologists, conservationists, rangers, wardens, communications and engagement staff, project management, finance and admin teams. There's plenty. We're a partnership project between Natural England, Plant Life, Natural Resources Wales, the National Trust and the Wildlife Trusts. And we're supported by the National Lottery Heritage Fund and the EU Life Programme. This is the only video in the series not actually filmed on a sand dune. And that's because when there are so many of us, not all of us actually work on site all the time, but we're still an important part of what the project does. V in the Dunescapes alphabet is for volunteer, an essential part of any conservation project. These are the amazing people that help us clear invasive species, scrape dune slacks, or help monitor the health and distribution of some of our rarest plants and animals in these amazing landscapes. Working together, we were able to give these places an even better future. W is for war history. Did you know that our sand dunes protected us during the Second World War? Here on the Sefton coast, Lights were strung up along the sand dunes to trick enemy aircraft into thinking those lights were livable so that they would drop their bombs on the sand dunes rather than on Liverpool. The blowout you can see behind me was thought to be started by a large German bomb. It has since grown and is now an important slack for breeding natterjacks. In Cornwall, a munitions factory was built in the sand dunes to keep the harmful chemicals away from the settlements. Today, X marks the spot. Sand dunes are not only important habitats for nature and wildlife, but they're also great places for families to come out and enjoy some fresh air on our beautiful coastline. On our website, dynamicdunescapes.co.uk, you'll find loads of activity ideas for a fun-filled day on the dunes. Whether that's playing frisbee, searching for footprints in the sand, or making art from the treasures and shells that you find washed up on the front of our dunes. Why is for young people. There are tons of amazing opportunities to involve young people with the Dynamic Dunescapes Conservation Project. There is citizen science, where you can go and collect data to monitor the state of the dunes. There's practical conservation, where you can go out and dig out invasive species to help the dunes. There is even engagement where you can get involved in our events and self-led activities. To find out more, please just get in contact. As you won't find any zebras on the sand dunes, we're going to talk about lizards for the Z part of the alphabet. Both common lizards and rare sand lizards can be found on the sand dunes. They love these open sandy spaces where they burrow inside to hibernate over the winter months or lay their eggs on south-facing slopes and that sun will incubate them nicely during the summer. 